Now to our special guest this morning, media mogul Barry Diller is here. He's the chief, uh, former chief of Fox and Paramount Pictures, now chairman, of course, of IAC. He's built uh, what's now become a $20 billion internet and technology conglomerate. Uh, why, why do you forget Expedia? And Expedia. I mean, by please, the way, you know, Expedia is you know, like a, we've, a good we, thing. I, we, you, we have a chart here. Hold on. Let me see if I can find the chart. Do you know, do you know if you invested a dollar in IAC when you first joined uh, today, You'd have a dollar today. If you had a dollar today, S and P, you would have eight dollars. Uh, Warren Buffett, you'd have twelve dollars if you were a Berkshire investor, and if you were an IAC investor, you'd have twenty-two dollars. Whoa! So there yeah. you have it. There I you have it. Stop. You can stop right now. We can. I could, we can call I it a day. Another chair. Um, we have about a hundred issues we want to talk to you about. We have the streaming wars. We've got China. We've got what's going on in Washington uh, with with internet companies. We have what's happening with Match.com. But let me start with streaming for a second. I don't know if you followed what's gone on with HBO Max uh, yesterday yes. without a big announcement um, yes. and what their plans are. I remember when we sat together, I think about a year ago at the New York Economic Club, we were talking about Netflix, and you had a position where you thought actually that most of all of these competitors could never really compete with Netflix, that it would almost be impossible. You saw what HBO Max put out yesterday. Apple's now out. Yeah. Can this work? Well, the question is, what does work mean? I mean, you know, the thing is, is that, is, is that for the last basically 100 years before the invaders from the north, meaning Netflix and Amazon, came into the media business, the media business was controlled literally for that long, long period by essentially six companies. And when Netflix and Amazon began with different business models, in fact, they totally took away the hedge of money from all right. of these companies. And, and they, I don't think they'll ever get it back. Now, of course, what they want to do is compete. And of course, you know, they should, but they're competing against an, all, they're competing against an already built machine. And I don't think that they're ever going to actually compete with Netflix. It doesn't mean that, uh, for instance, Disney, which I think Bob Iger you know, such guts and determination and pushing everything on the table. I think Disney has a good play because, and I think, by the way, the question is, how many subscribers does it take times X dollars to equal the massive costs that are now taking place? Because those costs are literally insane. Three television programs, three episodes of 20 each television programs will cost a billion dollars today. Right. So, hard, you, so, so it's hard to compete. So, uh, but of course they're trying. So they want to get it back. David Faber is going to talk to John Stanky later today. Ah. If you were John Stanky sorry. or you said you're sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I don't if, mean that. If, no, no, no. But if, <laughs> if you were Randall Stevenson, do you, think, do you think that we're going to look five years from now at the AT&T Time Warner merger and say this was a good idea uh, or this was a you know, I don't terrible want, not, tragedy. It is not my business to, to, to do that. I think that I think everybody other than Disney has a very, very tough hand. The only one that I actually think of them all that's got a good play, and it's not simply because I'm sitting in their house, right. but I think Comcast, NBC, mm -hmm. it's much less risky. It's much more conservative, but it's ad supported. And so it doesn't have to really compete in trying to grab subscribers away in a, you know, in a rich subscriber market. So I think that's kind of What sensible. about Apple? Will that work? Well, I don't know. You know, they haven't, their feet are very kind of dangling slightly in the water. Actually, the thing is, I think they should get back to fixing the iPhone. Because before I came on here, yeah. my iPhone torch was lit and it took three producers to turn it off. So, Me too, after the new iOS, right. the new operating system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of glitches. Yeah. So anyway. So Apple. Um, so everybody, yeah. I mean, they're not charging what these things cost right now, right? I mean, they, Well, they, no, they, no, you can't spend, as I say. It, it'll change, by the way. I mean, if you're, if you're a producer, make any deal you can in the next six months. If I was a year. talented writer, shouldn't I move out to Hollywood? And, and Immediately. <laughs> yes, tonight. Unfortunately, I'm not, but uh, you are. Yeah. You're trying to get <laughs> away. Well, a um, talented. 
I yes, of course, of course, of course. I mean, that's you know? great though for everybody. I think it's great, and, I, and it's good for. Well, it's uh, great for consumers I want because they get the, they get tons and tons of stuff. Yeah. But, but you know, the talent market is kind of finite. And do you think the windows yeah. closing? Oh, it'll close in. Look, when when the bills start getting paid and these public companies have to announce right. the losses that they are taking, right. because these Five losses, dollars. by definition, have to be in the billions. There's right. no way around it now. You know, okay, their business plan for them, I'm, I, I would presume internally, makes sense because they think they've got to compete. But the truth is, I don't think they all really have to do so, not in the same way, not on the con con concept of literally trying to equal Netflix, whose spending, without any question, will quadruple anybody else's. But they're looking at a dwindling ice cube for a business model, thinking we've got to be where the consumers are. They want to get it back. Yeah. I can't blame them. I wanted to pivot uh, to talk a little bit about social media. And I know you followed uh, what was taking place in Washington last yes. week with Facebook. I Mark did. Zuckerberg and his position, effectively, that he wants to allow yeah. political advertising uh, on Facebook and not only allow it, but allow it such that you can say effectively as a politician, you know what? whatever you here's want. The thing. What do you think? Well, here's the thing. He's right. Not only is he right, is he right it's against the law on broadcast television. You cannot censor political advertising. Did you know that? Even if it's a lie? It doesn't matter. You can't censor it. Uh, by the way, how are you going to prove a lie, given most of these commercials in negative advertising are filled with exaggerations and things? But I think Mark Zuckerberg is completely right. I think he's become this poster boy, and he, you know, I. I actually think of all the services, of all these big monopolistic services, Facebook is really the most benign. I, I Facebook does not compete with its advertisers like the others do. Let me read you what Tom Friedman says in the New York Times today. He says, the internet barons have for, have for far too long ignored the weaponization of social media, which, in, which is turning our free press into a house of mirrors, he says, where citizens can no longer cognitively discern Fact from fiction and make informed judgments essential okay, for democracy. Okay, fine. Thank you, Tom. But what are you <laughs> going to do about it? Seriously, because here is the thing: that that you cannot look. We're at the very early days of this of, uh, of this kind of bullhorn that anybody can use for any purpose. So there's just tons of stuff out there, you know, to indict these uh, people who are in charge of these systems. By the way, they're not, you know. But believe me, the one thing they don't want is this huge draft on them of their responsibilities. But by the way, I think Facebook has spent billions of dollars to try and tame this. Because everybody would want to tame it. It ain't easy to but do so. Elizabeth, what do you do? When you see Elizabeth Warren take out an ad that's factually false just to prove that it's doable. Are we now going to get into truth? in terms of po political positioning. And you're a big boy. Aren't you a big boy? I'm a big boy. I, you I, know, I, I, are you going to get I, hurt I, I, by I this? I don't believe what I read all the time, except the New York Times. Uh, but I don't believe what I read. Uh, all, I'm, I'm a big boy. I can take it. I'll, let me, let me, I don't want Mark deciding whether it's, whether I can handle it or not. He can't, he can't. And he can't, you, they but can't look, ride you, herd over that. No I'm one can do it. It's the just election the way date it is. is. is if I'm telling you the election date is a different date in the location you're supposed to go. Oh, believe me, somebody's going to get it right. I mean, come on. You know, yes, it's very hard to discern things. But by the way, you, one of the reasons you choose what you take in, what you read, et cetera, is because one hopes you've done a little due diligence and you think that their hateful words, fair and balanced, that have been right. so damaged by those guys down the road. Uh, so the words still mean the same thing. You can use it. Fair and balanced still is, is a good thing. Do you do. think so? I think, I it's think you don't need to hit, hit, hit. It's not tainted forever. They're English words. They don't own them. Well, I think it's proprietary now. <laughs> okay, God, that's horrible. Then nothing's fair and balanced except them. <laughs> Separately, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, just right now in this digital age, yeah. we've had a number of IPOs this year. Yes. And there seems to be a huge disconnect between the private market valuations and the public market yeah. valuations. Uh, but there's a very good there, reason you, for two, that. Two protégés yeah, uh, yeah. in Dara Khosrowshahi at, at Uber and uh, at John Foley, Foley yeah. at, uh, at Peloton. Peloton. What do you think of all this? 
Well, when you have a bunch of guys sitting in a room like you would be sitting in a room, and you decide to sell stock to some new people in your private company, you can make up any figure you want. If somebody will take it, and by the way, they're all engaged to take it, because they know there's another round coming that's going to juice it even higher. It bears no uh, whatever I owe it to reality. So if you've got people making up values in a room, and then you take it to the public market, and the public market says, uh, no, we're not doing that, it's obvious. Hey, Barry, just with... with because it's a, it's, it's a rigged process anyway, so... The process is rigged. Well, of course. With As is the IPO process. So what would you Did do? it work better this time, though, or I, like, I think cases. direct listing mm -hmm. is a really good idea. Uh, auctions were tried by Google, uh, uh, and, and it worked, and I think they could work, too. The thing is, you're in this situation where you go on a roadshow to, quote, fill a book, and then the banker that you've signed wants to drive the price lower because he thinks that those people will give him money for other things, so he doesn't care about his, I shouldn't say this, but I mean, he cares about his client, but not as much. And uh, the result is that you know companies often, when they go public, as you've seen, for instance, Facebook got in all sorts of nightmare trouble because they sold it essentially too high, right? The truth is that they argued for the high price. It dropped afterwards, but it's way past that. I, the whole business is. If you were uh, 30 again, could, and could you go out to Hollywood? Do you have the skill set to become Barry Diller in, in, this, <laughs> in this day and age, do you think? Would you like to try? Is it exciting? Is it daunting? Would I? No. No. Well, is there too much? Is no, it, I is, wouldn't, is, because truly, you know, there has this this technical kind of move onto Hollywood uh, has really changed everything. It's right. it's changed the ground. I wouldn't want to. I knew so, I don't. I'm sure. Of course, there are opportunities, etc. But you used to be able to basically own your programming. Now. Netflix, Amazon say, we're buying your programming outright. You get nothing, whether it's a success, basically, or a failure. So you can't do the things that people did in those olden times, mm -hmm. which is build asset values, because, for instance, you owned The Simpsons. You owned a part of The Simpsons. Jim Brooks, who produced The Simpsons, has probably made billions of dollars, it's the most profitable series on television because its afterlife was so valuable. Yeah. That's over. What, what's your favorite thing to watch at night? What would top three things that, that Barry Diller, la, la, la. Do, you sit and do you sit and watch? Well, last night I watched Catherine, okay. uh, uh, The Great, with Helen Mirren, uh, who is so great. It's not that great a show, but, Ka but Helen Mirren, I literally, I was telling my wife that she would have been really irritated if she'd been with me because I literally watched it four times. I, I kept rerunning scenes because to watch her perform was just a joy. Because there's a lot to watch, and I, I'm always looking uh, for things. Do, do, what do, you, do you watch this in, us in the morning? Do, what do you yeah, watch? I, I, you do. You watch. Well, I don't know if I watch you, but they, there you are in the background. And <laughs> every once in a while, you know, I see something. That's as good as it's going to get, and, I think. And, and it perks up. And, I have a totally different question for you. Yes, sir. Which is one of the things, and we've talked about this, that you see on this show all the time, is a conversation about wealth in America and this sort of big wealth debate. Yes. Which you know so very much about. Yes, I have heard you talk about yes. that. Yes. And you've been very critical of President Trump, but I'm, over the time, on this show and elsewhere. But I'm curious what you think of Elizabeth Warren, if she's well, the front runner. <sighs> well, I think if you take her at her word, uh, if this country wants to be a, a, a kind of socialism somewhat light, but not that light, uh, done and done. I'm not so sure, based upon things I read, but I don't really know enough here, that you can take her at her word. She might be moving at some point, once she gets into it, more center. She kind of moved around the dial a bit, I gather. But if you take her at her word, God forbid. I mean, it would be, it, it would be bad. And so what... But by the way, I've been tested by my friends, which said, okay, comes down to that moment. Right. So Trump or her? Yep. You know, 
I, I, my, I was going to say my dog or him, but the truth is, you know, my dog would do a fine job. You only job. have one dog? Oh, no, I have three. Okay. Which one? They're all your children. Of course. So, what, no, so really, what would you do? I'd vote for her. You'd vote for her? We, we have to. He, we cannot. It's one thing for this accident to have happened, you know, this election of him that happened, a confluence of odd events. If we reaffirm that, if we actually actively knowing what we know reaffirm that, I, I think the consequences... You're talking, about, you're talking about character then because you're not talking about results. I'm absolutely talking about character. Okay, because results you would affirm... I'm talking about standards. Right. I'm talking about character. Right. I'm talking about decency. I'm talking about all okay. of those values that have been blown. And so I think... Nothing else matters. Do you think Hillary would have had higher character and higher values? Absolutely. Really? You For think, sure. And the Clintons have, have demonstrated that in the, in the past? Well, look, let's do this. He was a good president. Well, then no, you're but, back to talking about Trump, actually, in terms of what he's accomplished. No, no, no. I, Unemployment, look, oh, wait, wait, wait. stock market. Are we going to get into now? Are we going to get into it, it, No, I don't know. What, what is a good president? Fid fidelity. Uh, no, no, or, no, I'm not going there. So what are we going to do? Talk about the end result of, of, you say Clinton was a good president and, and accomplished good things. Yes, I do think so. Okay, but character-wise, uh, in a lot of Char different ways. No, no, no. With, the, with both of them. I am fine with the character of President and, and Clinton. And the Clinton Foundation and, and all and the... And Hillary Clinton. Inter and the truth is that the Clinton Foundation has raised a ton of money and done a number of really great things, which, by the way, it continues to do. The problem is, is that Bill Clinton was never a great manager executive. And he made some managerial mistakes. But by the way, even now, after all these investigations and everything, the Clinton Foundation has never been found to do evil work, bad work, et cetera. And, well, no, no, you... No, but things kind of dried up once it was clear she wasn't going to be president. I mean, there's a reason all, every Middle Eastern company gave a lot of money to the Clinton Foundation knowing that the former president's wife was well, going to be the next president. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with what they did when they took the money. Uh, and when that, they took, that's in dispute. And when how, they, much, how much actually went to, to causes. Of what do you that think it went to? Do you I'm actually believe? Sure. Are you part oh, of... Oh, are, you, on, are you this... Right. Are There's you no going to go into this yes, conspiracy the thing? Money. Come on. I, I do. I've got fair and balanced. That's not fair and balanced. That's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's something else. Let me ask you about Match.com. Now, Joe. You're, you're spinning off Match.com like you do. This yes. You build great companies, build them up till they take off. That's our little model. What do you see next? Because I can't imagine that you spin out Match without saying, here's the next big thing. Here's where I'm pouring my interest no, and all my what, time. First of all, when we complete Match, we'll probably have four billion or so in cash and, you know, and we'll have and no debt and we'll have, I don't know, four or five hundred million dollars of cash every year coming in from the things we have still at IAC. IAC, you have to think, is an anti-conglomerate. It builds, its purpose is renewal. It's, we're in our fourth cycle, which is we build things up, we spin them off, That's what we I mean. get down to very little. What do you plow it into next? Oh, well, it's opportunity. There or are you just looking for other things. Opportunity. To see what's there? There's always opportunity. Do you want to hint at the opportunity? Do, is there something in your mind's eye right now? There's many things. My mind is overfull. Uh, one, uh, one final question for you. One of the things that's fascinating to me about this match transaction is the idea that you're going to give up the dual voting so you mm -hmm. won't have control. Mm -hmm. Why? And that seems to go against previous transactions that you've pursued. No, not and, true, Andrew. Not true? And then, but I was going to say, and the sort of ethos in, in the half, valley right now. Half of the transactions that we have spun off, that we have done, uh, have, we've spun off without dual class stock. The reason... But there were others with. The, yes, of course. The reason is, I no longer think I have very much to contribute to match. And therefore, what's the point? I, by the way, I also don't want... If you take on that responsibility, right. then you have the responsibility for the company. Truthfully, I don't want to have it. I have enough responsibility. Do you like But I don't, but by the way, dual class stock, I yep. think in many cases, thank God for it. Because the one thing dual class stock does, and of course there's instances where things go bad, but what it generally does, its only purpose is it allows you to take the long view without having anybody pull the rug from underneath you. And there are so many instances of that, that it is overall a very good thing. You will... Um, for, for 
early stage companies. You won't move if he gets reelected. You, we were supposed to move less. No, I did not say I'd move. I said I would either move or join the resistance. <laughs> okay. I did join but the resistance. But if he wins, you'll, you'll come back on the set. You'll be around. I mean, we don't, have to, we don't need to send a. I don't know. We don't if need he, to send a, 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 someone to New if Zealand. If he gets reelected, given how he feels about me, I'm not so sure I would be able to walk Can we agree on this? I'm going to show you this. Can we agree on that? Ah, uh, sweet. Look at those, those two. Are dogs. Wow, those are scary. They're beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> My little dogs aren't scary. Yeah, they're Barry Diller, the one and only. Thank you for coming and Pleasure. being with us. Uh, Enjoyed on it. The first uh, day. Uh, this uh, congratulations on your new digs. Stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. He he has us on, but but doesn't watch. What was that again? That comment. The you background. do sort of watch. You but I you have. Sort of watch. By the way, don't you think many many people sort of watch? You, you think everybody is like yes, yes. When we're <laughs> it, yes, I think that it's riveting. Anyway, you are, you are riveting. Thank Listen, you. you're the best thing in the morning. How's that?